In this next video, to further develop your Python programming skills, I'm going to start off um, in math class and talk about variables. I think most of you are familiar when you use a variable in math, what you're really using is some kind of a letter or something to represent a value that can change, a value that can vary. So you can pick different values that you want depending what you're doing or what reasons you have, and it varies. That's the word variable. In Python today, I want to build on that idea. So my fifth Python program is using variables, and there's three main types. Before I go there, I want to show you something in the Python program. When you write your programs, if you go under Options and Configure, uh, I kind of thought that the font's a little small, so I set my font to 12, and that will help show bigger on the screen. Um, there's another thing going on. When you go and run your program, you notice how mine just ran right away, and it didn't do that you want to save thing. One of the things that goes on when you run a program is it will do a check, and it's often called a syntax check, or it will compile the program. And compiling means it runs a check to make sure that all of the typing is correct. For example, if I leave that out and I run it, it's going to flag it with an error and say, you have a syntax error. A syntax error means you've got typing problems. It's like a spell check something's wrong in the syntax or the spelling or the punctuation of the code and it's not valid for python for example so again if if some reason you have something missing in your code something typed wrong it will give you an error some syntax it, hey you've got something typed wrong in how it's coded it doesn't mean um there's a logic problem with your code, it means a syntax or a typing problem. So you have to watch for that. So under configure, I think a lot of you have uh, here, when you press F5 start to run, it will prompt you to save. And when you do that, each time that you save your program, uh, sorry, each time you try to run your program, this will pop up. Do you want to save? So what it's doing is it's compiling, checking, and then saving it, and then it actually runs the program. Uh, I didn't tell you that earlier, but once you get good at programming, you could probably just turn that off and say, you know what, I, I get what's happening. I don't need to do that anymore. Okay. Um, some of you, depending on your format, and I was having trouble, the screen doesn't fit right. So you can change the size of your editor. When you have this window on the screen, you can change how many lines show up and stuff. So it'll help better fit on your screen. Um, some of you are programming enough, you could go back here and see what different highlights and stuff that you want, depending on how things would look. As a recap for what we worked on, remember, every time you're doing a program, first thing, I want to comment who you are and what dates you have. Again, you don't have to have those spaces in there, but boy, it sure helps when you're a human reading the code. Those little blank lines make all the difference. Um, a bit of an improvement or a fix for my last videos, I didn't have the idea of putting this right in bold what's the purpose of your program i did say you know you should say what am i doing or whatever but maybe if we just put the word purpose dash this is what i'm doing this program for that's what the purpose is as before start and end so that kind of frames everything that you're doing in the program in addition now because we're talking about variables I'm going to ask you to make a variable declaration list. And again, it's another sort of bookkeeping or extra that we humans sharing code is helpful to see. And what we're doing is we're naming each of the variables that we're going to use and what they're for. So I'm going to start talking about the three main variable types that you will use when you're doing programming. First one is called a string. A string is really just a collection of characters or text that you type together. So it strings it along. 
So in this case, I'm making a string variable to have the user's name. Now, I could call the variable n, or like math class x, or I could call it a, or I could call it anything I want. But in programming, it's good to pick a name of a variable that's kind of like a single English word or something that reminds you this variable has a job. And when you pick, I mean, sure, I could name the variable x. But then when I start looking through my code, I'm, what does x stand for again? What was that? But when I make my variable named name, then I know it's a variable that stores the user's name. Second type is called an integer variable. Now back to the horrors of math class, integers are numbers that have whole values. So how many apples in the bag? Well, there's three apples or there's four apples. You don't have 3.7 apples, generally speaking. When we talk about someone's age, right? How many years old are you? Yes, we could say 2.7 years old, but most people don't do that. So we use integer values for certain number of values in life. Your age, how many people in a room, or how many cars in a parking lot. It's an integer value. Um, that will make a lot more sense as you do more programming in your life if you go somewhere. But again, I could put a variable, call it A, or I could call it S, or I could call it anything. But why would I do that? In programming language, it's, it's just good practice to give small English words that reflect the job. So I'm going to make a variable called age, and it's going to have an integer value in years. Now it gets a little bit weird. What if I want to save a number in a variable or use a number in a variable, but I want decimal values? It's not an integer value. Different programming languages use different terms for this. A lot of programming languages like Java and stuff, I, if I remember right, they call them real numbers. Real meaning it can have any kind of value, negative, positive, decimal, everything. Some programming lang languages call them float because the decimal floats around, the number decimals float around. It's kind of a floaty number. So I chose to use a real or float variable type for the person's weight in kilograms. Yes, okay, maybe you could say a person's weight is a kind of an integer, oh, you're 62 kilograms or you're 63 kilograms, but I think you get the idea. And again, I used a little English word for it. Notice these are all comments. I'm just doing this to declare or explain to the other humans reading my code what I'm trying to do. Start my main program. Now, I'm assigning values to my variables. What happens here is you give values to the variable and somewhere in the computer RAM, somewhere on the motherboard, somehow the actual values those variables have get stored in there and then we're gonna use them later. And in this case, we'll use them as in print statements. And here's how it works. My variable name is assigned this value of string. Now, the quotes just sort of string the variables along, uh, sorry, the characters along. This variable will have a string or a collection of characters. It has a capital M, not a small one, an R, a period. Yes, a blank is a character. That is a character. Another one, another one, another. So this string of characters, this string, in quotations, is assigned to the variable name. So I, uh, sometimes students do it this way, and they put it backwards. This string of a characters is assigned or equals name. This is an error. You can't do that. I did a little programming trick. I put a common in there, so when I compiled my program, it wouldn't give me an error. But as a general rule, don't do that. You always put the variable name assigned and the value you want it to be assigned. My variable age is assigned 
the value 29, and the variable weight is assigned the value 80.5. So you're kind of reading left to right, not right to left, if that makes sense. And that's just the way things are done. Then blank line just for style, and then I up out put the assigned value. Remember what the blank print statement does? Just gives it a blank line, just a style thing. Now print quote string hello there in string. That's not a variable. It actually will print that all the time. Comma that's a syntax thing, and then name. So I'm asking the computer to print this, we've seen that before, and this. So what the compiler or program will do is it'll run off to RAM somewhere there should be a variable called name. And then it'll print out whatever value it finds there. What value will it find? It will find that collection of characters, that string of characters. Print a blank line. Print. Run off to RAM, somewhere on the computer motherboard is something stored, and whatever value you find for that variable, send it to the screen, comma, and then send that to the screen. Another style thing, print that, comma, run off to RAM, find that variable, whatever value it has, put it on the screen, and then that. Watch what happens. Run the program. Boom. Hello there, Mr. Meyer. Let me see if I can put this up for you. So hello there and there is that value. Print age, 29 years old, eh? You sure? So I printed all that. There's my blank line. And then you weigh blank 80.5 kilograms and that's that now watch this Oops. i'm going to cheat i'm going to do this copy paste it so i assign the values and i'm going to change the assigned values So I'm just going to, and I'm going to say, Mr. Python, I'm going to change the value to 3.5, or 3.8, is that the version we're using? And the weight will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just making something up. Now what's going to happen? I run my program, and it's going to, We'll go through here, it'll assign these values, it will print these things out, then it will change the values in RAM to these new values, and then run the same print statement again. Let's see what happens. Run, and boom, there it is. Those values vary, they're variables, can change. Okay, that's all. I hope that makes sense.